Hello everybody, this is Bob from Cartina's Model Railroad Society with episode number four, looking east of Sacramento and the industry is headed toward McClellan. Uh, we're gonna start with this video series by taking a look at how all these pieces and parts fit together with an overview from downtown Sacramento all the way out to um, the Roseville Yards. This right here is an overview of the Sacramento shops and the passenger station as it sits today. The uh, loading, passenger loading has been moved over to where the shops, close to the shops are. You can see how far that is from the station and that uh, back and forth. Uh, these sheds are where the passenger loading used to be. They're now the light rail connection to the downtown core that are marked out by the four large buildings in the background. Sacramento shops are a huge complex that extend beyond the uh, uh, the buildings that you see there that are now owned by the city and uh, currently used as uh, locomotive storage for the uh, rail museum that's right on the other side of this bridge here. Uh, this is an overview. You can see that uh, you know, back in the day how big this whole complex used to be compared to what it is now. Um, the yellow arrow is the shops from end to end and just the buildings not counting the tracks that you can see that continue on in the background which coincidentally is where our sims is this first purple arrow is where the station is currently located that is not built in uh, as of this time picture um, the current station is where the other arrow just appeared closer to the shops and it seems as what's old is new again as that's approximately the position where the current passenger loading is as it sits today uh, that station's obviously no longer there. It was destroyed a long time ago, and uh, um, you know uh, that whole station complex had continued to evolve from the time this picture was taken through the modern era. Um, looking at this picture, it's a little bit more modern. The station is in place now. You can see by the butterfly sheds off to the right. Um, there's a express freight facility in the little shed that's still standing off in the right center of the page and then uh, you have the uh, mainline photo there and uh, the sh shops off to the left and you can see a little bit closer of what the um, how massive the complex was and how many buildings were included um, in the foreground um, it would be practically impossible to model on a, a 36 inch by six foot space. Um, was gonna pull that off the backdrops, but uh, we're just gonna do it as a flat in, in order to conserve space. And um, thing to note for these drawings is these buildings right here in the center where the arrow is, um, there's an odd space in front of where we're going to put the um, photo backdrop and I think that those buildings will fill the space nicely so take a mental picture of that we'll come back to that when I talk about the um, the actual um, drawing at the very end of this video coming back to the rail yard there you can see how big this complex was now the uh, city's uh, got it through redevelopment right here and here's the downtown core the new Sacramento Kings Arena shopping district and down at the very bottom the old historic Sacramento district um, Zooming in closer you can see the old freight depot where the federal building is used to be another building that was tied to freight after REA died and uh, That was one of the first pieces to be given away by the uh, or sold by the Southern Pacific Railroad and this kind of shows you what's left of the remaining historic structures that will be maintained by the uh, historical society um, got the roads moving east as we move down the main line here you got sims off to the left there and then we've got uh, blue diamond which is uh, kind of reminiscent of what we're doing over in davis um, there's more of this down in the south end and we'll talk about that in a future video this right here is one of the main lines this is the wp main line it's now owned by union pacific uh, BNSF moves most of its traffic through there. I only show you this because I made a wrong turn. Wanted to follow the main line, which is this line right here, and that's the Elvis branch. Takes you up to uh, Placerville. Uh, just um, gets a couple trains a day there and local traffic. 
uh, main line continues on through um, Sacramento into this industrial district not a lot of rail service up here um, until we get to pass this um, light rail um, engine facility and uh, now we're kind of getting close to where we want to be so I reoriented uh, north to be the top of the page that's Auburn Boulevard that changes to Roseville Road and this is uh, if you're ever in Sacramento this is where you want to go for train spotting because that's the main line and all the Lathrop traffic and all the Oakland traffic emerge right here and end up going to the Roseville Yard which I show you at the very north of where the arrow was so McClellan is a former air base and it is now an industrial district and this is the edge of it this uh, these industries are served by BNSF and Union Pacific yeah BNSF through track rights this is an interchange yard and the complex is served by its own railroad that has keeps its locomotives in that little facility right there in the center of the image and um, uh, then the uh, two major railroads come in and they pull their traffic off and interchange it there at that yard. Along the way here, they've got rail served industries, Southwestern Wire, and uh, Roofing Supply Corporate, so Roofing Supply Group. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And then uh, we've got the main line that continues through. And about right here is uh, mile marker 99.7. The arrows right here, somewhere in the stretch, is um, the marker. Maybe it's that maybe it's up here somewhere I don't know I just I know it's in this area I've been um, if you come down here you can go to the fast food right there can't listen for 99.7 because if you do it'll be too late but uh, you know this is Roseville Road plenty of places to park but not on the road no parking on the side like those PG&E trucks are and uh, you know they probably get about 20 30 trains each way coming out of that because all the traffic to the Roseville yard going uh, south and west comes through that line right there so lots of traffic lots of passenger um, uh, two Zephyrs uh, four commuters or maybe two commuters uh, this right here is the industry this is really fascinating because uh, they switched the, those uh, steel cars and they load them and offload them with forklifts and cranes right on that siding right there there is no fixed crane they do it all from the ground with um, uh, with heavy machinery and uh, it's quite the scene when the when you see them do it live um, they've got another that's the picture of the engine house and they I see here that I got confused because the uh, the perspective shifted but you can see that they've got a local freight that looks look like one of the, the locals like the uh, SJ MRV that's what a typical consist looks like but you can see there that that train's not there here and it's there there and again it confused me for a moment because I was trying to get a picture of the diesel facility right behind there which I do in a, in a couple of minutes so there it is there's the diesel facility for the uh, local railroad that serves um, McClellan and there's one of their locomotives a Jeep 15 and uh, that's that motor does the uh, all the local switching for the two major railroads and uh, uh, through that yard the other thing is is that they built another great big warehouse it's not in this picture or maybe that's it right there um, I don't know what they what that is and what they're going to be if they're if that's going to be rail served well um, it's they just completed the industry so we'll uh, you know, rains to be seen what will you know what additional rail service will come out of that and this right here they interchange logs right there you know the logs come down off the Siskiyou branch I guess and uh, from the Pacific Northwest and then they ship it off to Asia so that's the prototype um, this right here is um, me working on the scene so what we've decided to do is uh, didn't is change around the two industries in the center there that's the rail X warehouse in the back and uh, bird's eye frozen food processor in the front and so right now I'm putting in I'm expanding that industry right there and um, putting in the scenic details and you can see over here by Sacramento I put in the low rise buildings across the tracks uh, next to the downtown core like was um, prototype I used some buildings that were the appro approximate right size they're a little bit more grungy than I really want to be there um, but whatever ends up going down there it'll be low rise and it will be 
it will not obstruct the line of sight to the old Sacramento shops and the uh, Sacramento station in the back there. Um, I did expand the station off of the prior drawing. Um, that's a composite of two or three buildings that I put together in order to make a representation of the station. And I'm expanding the warehouse, the Railex warehouse, in order to fill up the space a little bit better. So I've added um, one segment of warehouse and some additional um, uh, docks so that uh, the entire area can be used. And again, that warehouse is going to be a little bit larger, a little bit more voluminous than um, what I'm going to end up building for that area specifically. And so. Um, if we can end up putting in two tracks, I'll show you the other drill when we talk about it. I, I, there's a way to get a second industry if we can get two tracks in there. But for now, what I've decided to do is compromise the trackage for scenic details. So I put the trucks on the end, shrunk the warehouse a little bit, put and uh, put, in a, uh, put in a little fence on the right-hand side. I do that later in the video. And, uh, you know, I'll put in the uh, scenic details in once I get... Uh, final guidance as to which industry goes in front and which industry goes in back. I did the other operation off camera so you won't see the um, you won't see all the moves that I make in order to put the pieces in place but uh, you will see the final product which shows that the Railex warehouse on the two track and the uh, food bird's eye food processor where the uh, Railex warehouse is here sort of like the frozen food processor in front for the sole reason that it, it's easier to get two tracks and when you're using those ARMN cars or older uh, refrigerated cars um, you know they, they typically run those things in, in blocks so you know if you have room for six cars uh, it'll conveniently switch with the other industry that's proposed in uh down in our richmond over there by our intermodal yard and um you know, some point and i'll have to come through and do a um do a narrated scenery walkthrough uh on those one one of the standard cmrs publicity uh, uh video walkthroughs and kind of explain what every everybody's looking at what everybody's looking at as we do the um as we go from industry to industry um this right here, the frozen food processor, I sort of screwed up because the, all these scenic details were for the plastics plant. And so I ended up, um, I don't know, at the end of this video, I think it might be in there, but I think I move all those trucks all the way over to the other side and just put standard uh, cab overs to represent refrigerated trucks um, and uh, container trucks um, over here by the frozen food processor, which would be more correct to a prototype. Um, put in a little bit of fencing put in the uh switching uh put in the uh uh whatever that building's called <laughs> um i can't remember so anyways you got the plastics plant up at the very top um we got the plastic cylinders those are i reduced the height of those looking at them right now so those plastics um storage units are going to be taller and uh so that industry right over there will take in chemical cars uh from the chemical processor down on uh, makoko and then it'll create plastics both uh, plastic pellets and sheet plastic that'll go out in uh the pellets will go out on uh uh covered hoppers cylindrical colored air slide cover hoppers and uh go to other um, advertising specialty manufacturers, other manufacturers throughout the layout and points east and west. Um, the Railex yard is going to take in um, material from off layout. It will serve um, that space right there uh, per our operations superintendent. He didn't want a lot of switching coming off of that industry because the Sacramento yard is so small and it has to serve right now it serves about 10 industries and it's as you can see it there's only one two three four you know five tracks in there with one track designated as the um uh, inbound outbound track so it is a small yard 
and given the fact that it has to switch 10 um, industries currently, the fact that I'm jamming another one, two, three, four, five, at least five layouts or five industries here, plus McClellan is going to get another four industries that I'm going to demonstrate in a future video. Um, it's it's a crowded place. Um, uh, odds are operations are saying that there's just not enough capacity. There's not enough um, yard capacity to serve all these industries um, as their uh, at their capacity. And so um, we're going to have a lot of uh, well, the switching guys are going to have a lot of fun. I guess that's probably the best way to say it. So. Um, I put in, you can see that X track right there. I put in a double crossover so that the passenger trains will not interfere with yard operations or at least will minimize the impact um, if they use the yard lead. Uh, what will have to happen is actually the passenger trains will have to cross over on the uh, Sims and uh, West Sacramento side and use the main lines to um, do their passenger boarding kind of like prototype and so that the uh, Sacramento yard guys can maintain control of the yard lead which runs in uh, right up against the station there. Now the buildings that I'm moving into place in front of the Sacramento shops represent that little complex of buildings that I, I demonstrated in uh, Chuck Zeiss's picture. This In this one I kept the tank and I only put one moderate sized shack in the space in order to fill it up and I think that kind of works you know once you put the scenic details in there um, I I like I like the way that appears I, in the other configuration I think I actually put a track in there too as a scenery track that's uh, that's kind of defunct you can see it on the um, that they did connect the main line in prototype to a switch that runs along front of the Sacramento shops there and uh, so it does make that track usable but uh, the, in order to make it happen here it require, would require compromising one industry which I'm sure our operation guys wouldn't mind and uh, but uh, and it would actually probably improve the scenery, generally speaking, because we'd be able to put just more non-rail scenery in there. But uh, where's the fun in that? Uh, you know, we put a put an industry in there, and voila! Here is what we ended up with after our after I turned the camera off, got a bunch of scenic details, put some cars in the layout so that you can kind of see how everything fits together. Um, you know, I didn't put a lot of scenic details in here in order to, because um, I didn't know which way they're going to go. I'll put in, I'll finish off the scenic details for the uh, membership when I do their presentation, and we'll be able to take a look to see what it looks like. But first, they got to tell me if they want the industry, the warehouse in back, like it's shown here, with the frozen food processor in front, and um, the plastics plant in back or if they want to switch around the industries with the uh, thing in the front. The other thing, I, the other uh, piece of information I need is, you know, if, well, what I've designed here for the Sacramento shops is going to be acceptable, whether, or if we want to go to, you know, let me get to the other video, the other picture, which will be here in just a moment. Bazinga. Okay, and then this is what it looks like with the warehouse in front. Now you see that there's a switch there that we can do a second industry if that warehouse is in front. And I'm like I say, I don't have anything one way or the other. Take a look at the Sacramento shops. I put a dummy track in and I put two industries in there. Or not two industries, but two shacks in there. And uh, you can see the frozen foods processor and the uh, plastics plant are all neatly seen so uh, either way i think that the drawing works um i'm happy with both configurations i think it's really just going to be a matter of taste and what the uh what the club wants to see on the layout and in terms of its finished product and uh in three weeks from now 
I'll have the necessary feedback for both of these sides to finalize the drawing and get it over to um, the planning committee and get a final word on this and then uh, finalize it for the final vote for the membership. So if you guys have any thoughts on this video and the last one that I put up a few hours ago, uh, happy to hear your comments. Would love to hear what you think. Um, something that I might not have thought about, something in the composition that sort of works or doesn't work, um, let me know. Happy to hear about it. Uh, I'll pass whatever comments along you have, and uh, we'll see what we end up with at the very end of this. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for taking 20 minutes of your time up for this, but I hope you found it enjoyable, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.